Can you guess what this is? It's probably a spider web. Think of it as a web, but not a spider web. It's the World Wide Web or the Internet. If we zoom in, we will see small squares, each of which is a network. Each network is just like a post office, and mail goes from one post office to another until it reaches the right town, that town's post office will then deliver the mail within that town. Similarly, data packets cross the internet by hopping from network to network until they reach the network that contains their destination internet protocol address. In the postal world, each post office has its own number. Similarly, on the internet, each network has its own autonomous number or AS number representing the network. Network operators or internet service providers need an AS number to control routing within their network and exchange routing information with other ASN. The protocol they use to exchange routing information is called Border Gateway Protocol or BGP. It is considered to be the postal service of the internet. When a user in New York loads a website with origin servers in Sydney, Australia, BGP is the protocol that enables that communication to happen quickly and efficiently. If we continue to think of BGP as the postal service of the Internet, autonomous systems are like individual post office branches. The diagram here illustrates a simplified version of BGP. Here, we have only six ASS connected to the Internet. In real life, we have thousands of ISPs and networks connected together. Let's say AS1 needs to send a packet to AS3. It has two different options. AS1 can hop directly to AS2, then to AS3. Option 2, AS1 can instead hop to AS6, then to AS5, AS4, and finally to AS3. When compared to the AS6 path, the route through AS2, with its fewer hops, proves to be the quickest and most efficient, showcasing the smart functionality of BGP. However, this simple network can become extremely complex if we add a few more networks or new connections. This is where BGP comes and provides the magic of selecting the best path between source and destination. Here are some basic facts about BGP before we proceed. BGP is a path vector routing protocol that takes into account the entire path, which means a sequence of autonomous systems to a destination network. BGP was introduced in 1989 in RFC 1105. An earlier version of the protocol was called the EGP, Exterior Gateway Protocol. The current version is called BGP4 and was defined in RFC 4271 in 2005. Usually, it runs on a router, you can also run it on a server. Finally, BGP uses well-known TCP port 179 for communication. So, what do we need to run a BGP? The first thing we need is the AS number. Each AS typically consists of ISPs or other large organizations, such as tech companies, universities, government agencies, and scientific institutions. Any organization that wishes to exchange routing information must have a registered autonomous system number. Acquiring an AS number involves a straightforward process. The Internet Assigned Numbers Authority is responsible for assigning ASNs to regional Internet registries. These RIRs, in turn, distribute the ASNs to ISPs and networks, including yours. The second thing we need is the router. Ensure you have enough memory, as BGP tables can be large databases that store a complete global BGP routing table from one BGP peer. It is best to have a minimum of 512 megabytes or 1 gigabyte of RAM in the router. There are almost 1 million entries in global BGP routing, and it keeps growing daily. The third thing is the rootable IP prefix or IP subnet. If you don't have one, your ISP will assign you one, or you can probably buy one for your organization. The BGP has two flavors. External BGP and Internal BGP. eBGP, or External BGP, is specifically designed for routing between different autonomous systems. It plays a pivotal role as the core component of the BGP protocol on the Internet, facilitating communication between these systems. Internal BGP or IBGP is used for routing within the same autonomous system. The need for BGP within and as typically occurs when multiple routing policies exist or when transit connectivity is provided between autonomous systems. Now, let's discuss how BGP selects the path. The goal of BGP is to direct network traffic along the most effective path. However, selecting the most efficient path is not a simple matter of hop count. 
BGP routers employ a multitude of attributes, each with its own significance, to make this determination. By using BGP attributes, you have full control over the traffic coming and leaving from your autonomous system. Usually, the two most common attributes used are AS path and local preference. Imagine you have a network with multiple entry and exit points. You need to decide which routes your traffic will take. AS path is the most common one. This attribute allows you to control inbound traffic to your autonomous system. By adding or prepending extra AS path on a less desirable path, you can influence which path incoming traffic will take. Routes with the shortest AS path become the primary entry points to your network. Now, let's talk about local preferences. This attribute influences outbound traffic from your network. By configuring a higher value of local preference on a router, you effectively designate it as the preferred exit point for your traffic towards the internet. The default value is 100, but any value greater than 100 makes the router the primary path for outgoing traffic. With BGP, autonomous systems, represented by their unique AS numbers, navigate this digital landscape, determining the most optimal routes for data transmission. Through BGP attributes like AS path and local preference, network operators exercise complete control over inbound and outbound traffic, ensuring reliable fast connectivity across the internet. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of BGP. Subscribe to the channel for future videos and updates.